Hi, this is Peter with CalcBook, and today we're going to be continuing our weld design series by looking at single line welds. Uh, this can be a fairly straightforward calculation, but sometimes when you have a bunch of different loads in different directions, um, it can be quite cumbersome to add them up correctly. So having a tool like CalcBook be, could be quite useful. So when we're looking at single line welds, right, pretty similar to the other welds that we've been uh, looking at lately, uh, we're going to be using the AISC specification, Chapter J. We're going to be using the Blodgett method, right? So we'll be treating um, the weld as a line with no throat thickness. This allows us to use our kind of fundamentals of engineering uh, to get the stresses in the weld. And I've talked about this before, but there's a slight difference between how the 15th and the 16th edition uh, of the AISC manual uh, calculates the welds. Uh, it just has to do with the direction factor, which we don't use uh, as part of this calculation, but the formatting of the equation is slightly different, so just something to keep an eye out. And then for a single line well, we actually look at five different degrees of freedom or, or directions of loading. Uh, we look at FX, FY, FZ coming out of the page, and then we look at moment about X, and we look at torsion, but we don't look at MY, right, because that goes right through the uh, you know, longitudinal axis of the weld, so there would be no uh, you know, uh, capacity for, uh, for moment about the Y axis for a single line weld. So uh, let's take a look at the problem statement for today. Um, we are going to be looking at a half inch plate welded to another steel base plate. Um, it's going to be eight inches long. We're using our E70 electrode for, for the weld material. Uh, the loading is going to be as shown in the diagram there to the right. We have a fillet weld on both sides of the plate. So uh, this is a, an important note here that we, even though we have two welds, um, they're so close together and we, we don't really have a bunch of capacity in the out of plane direction, uh, we treat this as one weld. So we'll just make sure that when we enter our forces into CalcBook, we'll divide that by two. Um, and so what we want to do is figure out what that fillet weld needs to be on each side of the plate. So for Loading in CalcBook, right, we're going to divide everything by two. So we have our uh, FZ is going to be five kips, our FY is going to be six kips, and then our moment about the X is going to be 65 kip inch. So let's go ahead and open up CalcBook and we'll get started on the design. All right, we've got CalcBook open now. So we go ahead and click into our steel design. We can use the 16th or the 15th. So we'll just go ahead and use the 16th edition. The calculations are, are the same. Um, click into our steel connection design, and then we'll scroll down and click into our weld design align. Click confirm to load that up. So let's go ahead and enter in our design input. So our height of the weld or the length of the weld is gonna be eight inches. Uh, we're gonna leave the weld leg at quarter inch right now. We'll come back and adjust that as needed. We'll go to our demand. Uh, we're going to click on none, right? We've already got our LRFD level forces. Uh, our force in the X direction, we do not have one. It's just zero. Our force in the Y, remember it was shown as 12 kips, but since we have two welds that we're looking at, and for CalcBook only looks at it as one weld for now, uh, we're going to go ahead and divide that by two. So our uh, FY is going to be six kips. Our FZ is going to be uh, five kips. Um, and then our moment about the X axis is going to be 65 kip inch and then we do not have any torsion. So uh, we can already see that we're over capacity a little bit, so let's go ahead and just update that first before we dig into the calculation. We'll just go up a 16th here to a 5 16th weld, and that looks like that is enough. So let's scroll down here and look at how we're calculating the demand on our single line weld. First thing we're gonna do is get some of our uh, section properties that we need, so the elastic section modulus, S sub X, right, H squared over six, and then our torsional constant, J sub W. And then we're going to look at the weld stress due to each load component like we do. Um, for FX, there is nothing. We don't have a load in that direction. FY, it's just the load divided by the H or the length of the weld. Um, and then we have our uh, 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 stress due to the uh, load normal, so the, the FZ force. And again, that's just the load divided by the length of the weld. Then our MX, right, our moment about the X axis, is going to be our moment divided by the section modulus there. And then our torsion, we don't have any, so that is going to be zero. And then we combine our stresses, right? The first thing we do is we combine our in-plane direction uh, uh, stresses. So we take our FX plus MZ, or the, the horizontal component of the torsion, right? Um, but that's going to be zero for both of those cases. So we just have FY for the in-plane direction forces. It gives us 0 0.75 kips per inch. Then we look at the um, total shear in the out-of-plane direction, right? So normal to the, the uh, longitudinal axis of the, of the weld. And that is going to be our direct force FZ. Um, and then we're going to add in the uh, component of the moment about the X-axis. So that gives us a, a out-of-plane direction um, shear per inch of 
7.2 kips per inch. And then we just take the square root, some of the squares of those two values, and we get a total uh, uh, shear per linear inch of weld of 6.76 kips per inch. And then we go and calculate our capacity, right? Pretty straightforward like we do each time. We get the effective weld area, our nominal stress of the weld, our directional strength increase factor, right? And this is what is different between uh, 16th and 15th edition of how this is kind of shown in the equation. It's just a little bit different, but same, same value ultimately. Um, get our nominal shear strength and then our design weld shear strength, which gives us a demand capacity ratio of 0.97. So this design is good to go with a 5 16th inch weld on both sides of the plate. Um, and that is our uh, part three series for our, for our weld design series of a single line weld. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the video. If you're still watching, we'd like to offer you guys a 25% discount on your first month's subscription of CalcBook. You can use the discount code YTCB2024 uh, during checkout, and you can receive that 25% discount on your first month's subscription. So we hope you enjoyed the video, and we'll see you next time.